Hello, this is Chef John from foodwishes.com with chicken paprikash. That's right, after many, many requests, I'm excited to be sharing what is my second favorite Hungarian dish of all time. Okay, goulash would be first, although it's pretty close to a tie. And I really love making anything Hungarian, since the recipes tend to be simple and easy to make, as well as always comforting and delicious. Plus, the names are never not fun to say. So with that, let's go ahead and get started by generously seasoning our chicken with kosher salt. And for this, my favorite cut would be the bone-in, skin-on chicken thigh. All right, dark meat just always works better in braised or stewed dishes. Plus, all these pieces are going to cook in the same amount of time versus trying to cook the breasts along with the thighs and legs where we have to worry about the white meat drying out before the dark meat gets fork tender. But having said that, pretty much any chicken parts will work. And then what we'll do once that's been thoughtfully seasoned is brown it very well, starting with the skin side down, over high heat and a little bit of oil. And I'm using olive oil, but regular vegetable oil will work. And I should mention, traditionally this is done in lard, so if you have some lard laying around, use that. But anyway, we'll sear that skin side on high heat for about five minutes or so, at which point we'll flip it over and give the other side a few minutes. And above and beyond getting a little bit of color on the chicken, we are mostly doing this to render some of that fat from under the skin, not only to improve the texture, but we're also going to cook the rest of our ingredients in that fat. Speaking of which, once that second side has been browned a little, we'll go ahead and remove that tube plate and reserve it until needed. And we should also turn off the heat. And we should be left with a fair amount of that chicken fat in the pan. And if it looks like you have a ton like I do, we could spoon out a few tablespoons so it's not so much. And maybe save that to fry some potatoes or dumplings in. So you'll have to be the judge of that, but I did remove a little bit. And then what we'll do is add our diced onions to this pan, along with a nice big pinch of salt. And we'll set our heat to medium. And we will cook these onions, stirring occasionally, until they soften and sweeten up, and start to turn a little bit golden. And then once that happens, we'll go ahead and toss in our minced garlic, along with a couple tablespoons of tomato paste, which as you can see, I'm squeezing in, with total disregard for ingredient amount accuracy. But anyway, that's just how these kind of recipes are. All right, just use the force. And then we will also at this point add some flour. And we'll give everything a stir and then cook this for about three or four minutes to form what is basically a tomato roux, or as we call in the business, a true. And not only are we cooking the flour a little bit, which is what's gonna thicken our sauce, but we're also sort of toasting that tomato paste onto the bottom of the pan, which is gonna intensify and deepen the flavor, not to mention the color. So like I said, we'll just give that about three or four minutes, at which point it should probably look something like this. And then once we're happy with that, we'll go ahead and stop and add our seasoning, which will include some salt, as well as some freshly ground black pepper, followed by the star of the show, our paprika. And I like to do two kinds. Okay, a little touch of smoked paprika, followed by a whole bunch of regular sweet paprika. And once all that's in there, we'll go ahead and stir that and cook that for about a minute. And if you can get it, you definitely want to use Hungarian paprika for, you know, super obvious reasons. But if you can't, use any paprika you can find. And this will still be very, very delicious. And that's it. Once that's been stirred in and cooked for about a minute, we'll go ahead and add our chicken broth. And we will also raise our heat to high and bring this up to a simmer. And as we stir this, that broth's going to release all that beautiful caramelized goodness from the bottom of the pan, which, yes, is called a fond. And once that's been stirred into the broth, as it comes up to a simmer, it should thicken up noticeably. And then what we'll do once our sauce is simmering is go ahead and add our chicken thighs back in. And as we do that, I think we should give them a little toss in the sauce. And who knows if that really makes any difference, but it sure feels right. And at this point, we'll reduce our heat to medium low. And of course, don't forget to add back in those accumulated juices from the plate. Or if those get thrown away, we're going to have a problem, you and me. And then here's the plan. What we'll do is cover this and cook it on medium-low for about 45 minutes to an hour or until it's definitely fork tender. And I probably should have filmed it, and I'm not sure why I didn't. But during that cooking time, it's not a bad idea to take a spoon and baste the chicken as it cooks. Or I guess if you want, you could flip them over halfway through. But spooning sauce over meat is pretty fun, so I'm a baster. But anyway, about 45 minutes to an hour later, we'll go ahead and uncover these and check to see if they're done. And we'll poke these with a fork. And if it goes in easily with very little effort, our chicken is done, which means we'll remove that and reserve it on a plate while we move on to finish our sauce. And by the way, if you want to go further and actually simmer this longer until the chicken's like fallen off the bone, feel free. I mean, you are after all the George Washington of when your pepper kosh is done. 
But for me, fork tender is just right. In any event, let's go ahead and finish our sauce. And the first step for that is technically optional, and that would be skimming some of this fat off the top. All right, I have a feeling my Hungarian friends don't think this is the best idea, but I do tend to skim off about 75% of it. Okay, so I do leave some, since chicken fat is delicious. And then once that's been accomplished, we can go ahead and pour in our heavy cream, along with some full fat sour cream. And then we'll take a whisk and mix that until it's fully incorporated. And yes, I did say full fat sour cream. All right, if you use a reduced fat sour cream here, it's going to separate and curdle and not look good at all. So please, I beg you, use the highest quality fattiest sour cream you can find. And then what we'll do is wait for this to come back to the simmer, at which point we'll add our chicken back in, along with, of course, any of the accumulated juices, which we never, ever waste. Okay, I feel like we've had this talk before. And that's it to finish this off. All we need to do is simmer this long enough so our chicken's heated through. And while that's happening, I encourage lots of basting. And obviously, we're also going to want to taste it for seasoning. And that's it. Once we're happy with how it looks, feels, and tastes, we will pull that off the heat and dollop it here and there with some sour cream and possibly garnish it with some freshly chopped herbs like parsley or dill, or in my case, some chives, which I think pair perfectly. And that's it. My take on chicken pepper kosh is ready to enjoy, which for now I'm going to do right in this pan because it was looking and smelling too good to resist. So I had to cut in and take a bite. And it was everything I wanted and more. Just an absolutely stellar stewed chicken dish. All right, we have those beautiful bittersweet notes from the paprika, balanced beautifully by that rich sour cream. Just so satisfying and comforting. I really could not have been happier with how this came out. If only I could work a fork and knife on camera. I mean, seriously, it should probably take less than 20 seconds to cut and eat a bite. But anyway, I think I was a little distracted because I didn't have time to make Hungarian egg noodle dumplings, which are called nokedli, and instead plated it up with some buttered and herb corkscrew pasta, which really is still a very effective pairing. It's just not quite the same as enjoying it with those little spetzel-like dumplings. But I do have leftovers, so don't be surprised if you see my attempt at those dumplings in the future. But anyway, the good news is, this chicken is so delicious, and that sauce is so amazing, you can serve this on anything, and I think you're going to be thrilled. Which is why, no matter what you decide to pair with yours, I really do hope you give this a try soon. So please follow the links below for the ingredient amounts, a printable written recipe, and much more info as usual. And as always, enjoy.